once a girl has her first period, this is an ongoing monthly occurrence for 30 something years. That ongoing occurrence requires frequent purchases of menstrual products that are not cheap. With two in five people unable to afford period products, the issue of period poverty arises. Throughout the United States, one in three low-income people have missed work, school, appointments, or other events due to being unable to afford period products. It, it's a vicious, vicious cycle of poverty um, where, you know, menstruators are, are having stocks or other items um, instead of period products. Period poverty is actively being combated by numerous organizations. One of these is the Alliance for Period Supplies, which is a national network for nonprofit organizations that does research on the groundwork and leads policy and legislative efforts. Manager of State Policy for the Alliance for Period Supplies, Lacey Garrow, did collaborative work with members of the Texas Legislature, including Representative Donna Howard and Senator Joan Huffman. That led to the passage of two bills, Senate Bill 379 and House Bill 242. Senate Bill 379 exempts period products, among other items, from sales and use taxation that is often called the luxury taxation. Chairwoman of the nonprofit She Supply, Denise Angarola, works to end period poverty in North Texas, and she has much to say on the value of this bill. For organizations like us, it helps our buying power. So you remove the tax when we go to purchase in bulk. It just allows us to take what would have been tax money and order more products. Removing the sales tax only does so much for individuals experiencing period poverty, as the issue remains. But for somebody who's truly struggling, for someone who is low income or has just lost their job, you know, the, the tax isn't going to make that huge difference that they need. They're not going to be able to afford the products in the first place. As nonprofits work to fill that gap, House Bill 242 protects these organizations from liability. This specifically arises with tampons, which are a class 2 medical product and are attached with a liability due to the risk of toxic shock syndrome. Because of this, many nonprofits would not provide tampons to those in need. Uh, research shows that many women prefer to use tampons, so with that liability, um, we're, we're really limiting what choices uh, those individuals receiving the products had. House Bill 242 may even result in more joining the effort to provide period products to those in need. It alleviates the burden from an individual organization who might have thought about distributing or might have thought about donating if they had that in their mind. For these organizations to succeed, they depend on the donations of their community. Well, we love our community. Um, they're just so supportive of us. They're supportive of the mission. Whenever we have a rally call that we need products, they are just, they come through. Organizations like She Supply then work with community partners to get these donations to people experiencing period poverty. We work with a lot of partners who distribute to our end recipients. Mm -hmm. And so we work with domestic violence shelters, food banks, homeless shelters. We work with a lot of Title I schools. Those suffering from period poverty are likely to also be struggling to pay for food, shelter, medicine, and other vital items. We want to be able to help as much as possible alleviate the concern of having to budget for period products. Organizations work to end period poverty as a whole issue, but they also are striving to help each individual menstruator improve their lives. We really hope that by um, being able to provide free products to them, they can sustain their health throughout the month and possibly throughout the year. It just helps one aspect of their life that they don't have to worry about. Reporting for NT Daily News, I'm Mallory McCrory.